Hey guys, I'm Chantel. And I'm Chris. And this is Forgotten Fridays. Hey guys, and welcome back to Forgotten Fridays. Today we have another listener case suggestion. This one is pretty crazy, so buckle up. This is the case of Kathy Fulton Page. Kathy was a wife and mother of two daughters, Aaron and Monica. Her husband was Steve Page, and they have been married for 13 years at the time of her death. To most people, they seemed like the perfect family. Kathy and Steve met when she was 21 in Vider, Texas. Is that right, Chris? Is it Vider? Vider? I have never heard of... I am still amazed by new places in Texas. I'm... It's too yeah. big. This state is too big. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Steve was an insurance salesman who'd swept Kathy off of her feet, despite a lot of interest from other young men at the time. The couple married in November of 1981, and their oldest daughter was born soon after. Their second daughter was born four years later. But by 1991, their marriage was over, and Kathy had asked Steve for a friendly divorce. In the early morning of May 14th, 1991, police in Vider, Texas, responded to a call about what appeared to be a black mercury tracer stuck in a ditch, likely a car accident. But as investigators looked at the scene more closely, they found evidence that would suggest the accident was not an accident at all. They found the 34-year-old body of Lucille Catherine Fulton Page, more known as Kathy. She had no obvious wounds or injuries on her body, and her car hardly had any damage on it, to the point that the drinks in her car didn't even spill and her purse hadn't spilled anywhere. Her feet were back near the seat rather than at the pedals, and even though she didn't have a seatbelt on, her seat was in a reclined position and she had not been thrown forward by the accident. So the police immediately don't think her death was caused by this car accident. Ray Mosley was a detective sergeant for the Vider Police Department at the time of the crash. Chris, will you read what he said about the scene? Being no damage to the interior of the vehicle and very little damage to the exterior of the vehicle and the deepness of the ditch, plain to see this was a staged incident instead of an accident. So at that point, they felt they had probably a questionable death. Thank you, Chris. So automatically for detectives to feel like this is a staged crime scene is very telling in itself. I don't think you get around that, right? Like if it's one thing, if something looks kind of fishy, it's another thing if it looks staged. I'm still on the fact that what is up with these husbands? (laughs) Like I'm already sussing husband. (laughs) Because she asked for a divorce recently. It just, it's a weird timing, you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's what they say, right? The first person you look at is the husband or someone close to them. That's usually what eight out of 10 of murders are. It's easy to find a motive with a, with a husband, you know? Much easier than any other relationship. Like with a mom, it's like you would think they wouldn't do that. With a dad, you know, it, it, like those kind of family ties, it, it's hard to look for. But a husband, though. Um, but I do find it interesting that this is a cover-up kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that this is a staged crime scene and not like uh, our usual where, like, most people don't have that much malicious, you know, like that much far planning. It's just very sloppily yeah, done. Very true. Um, it's very true. It's very telling. And something to remember going forward, listeners, that what Chris just said about how this is a stage. This isn't your little random, I got mad and killed. Zone. This is a staged incident. Yeah. What they call that something. There's like a, a something manslaughter like um or premeditated murder yeah yeah that Mm -hmm. yep so the crash scene was just a hundred yards from kathy's home and when authorities arrived at her home her husband steve answered the door they did inform steve that kathy was dead and he seemed visibly upset investigators did state that steve's behavior was odd though 
He was crying and upset, but they made notice to the fact that he would also stop and act as if nothing was wrong. Chris, will you also read what that detective said about his interaction with Steve? He said, while his wife was not home and directly looked straight down the street towards where the car was, Steve seemed to be quite upset. He began to cry and at times threw himself on the couch crying, but yet he would jump right back up and we were talking and there would be no signs of tears in his eyes. This seemed strange to me. And you know what, Detective? I'm right there with you. That's fucking strange. You start crying and then you stop. You know who it reminds me of? Kyle Sam. Dickhouse. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but no, you remember how he was on the stand and, and he'd be sobbing and crying and then he'd look up at the jurors like, everybody knows I'm sad, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't even like to, to bring up him. He's like Voldemort to me just because it really pisses me off that our government that our criminal justice system is just so flawed it would seem you know <laughs> mm -hmm. but um i will say that that is it it seems like an act anytime you can shut an emotion down like that or turn the emotion off true genuine emotion usually is long lasting like you'll see mm -hmm. the effects of it lingering on a person if a person was just sad only a um sociopathic person or you know someone who's very detached from their emotions it can be like that where it's like instantly shut down mm -hmm. then your emotion was just an act it was it's something you can easily turn off and the fact that the man like this seems like an act to me because you're going through the motions of how to uh how you think you should act which is very dramatic throw myself down like uh no, not the woman I love. Like, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or some form of distraught or whatever. But yeah, you're right. When you're coming, when you cry one second and then come, act completely normal, it seems like an act. Did y'all hear the, the Texan and Chan's voice? She sounds like she's from, uh, what, Viter, Texas. That's where she sounds like she's from. What did I say? It's gotten so bad, and it's because of Everly. She is so country. Like, everything, she'll even be like, I'm country. Oh, my gosh. You are. <laughs> That's funny. So, from here, police basically kept their focus on Steve Page. Steve did profess his innocence, though. Steve told investigators that around that time, Kathy felt that she no longer wanted to be married to him and they were planning to separate. Steve said mainly she was uncomfortable with who she was, or at least that's what she explained to me, that she didn't know who she was. She wanted to try to find out who Kathy was. Because of that, we talked about separating for a short period of time and allowing her to hopefully find herself. Steve had moved out just a few days before Kathy was murdered and was living in a condo nearby to be around their children. He told investigators that they were working things out. However, Kathy's sister, Sherry, said his claims were inaccurate. She said that the marriage was beyond repair and that Kathy was starting to move on with her life. She also said that Kathy was planning to divorce Steve soon, and he had moved out shortly before her death. So this went against him claiming they were working things out. And according to her sister, they weren't even friendly at this point. Sherry said Kathy was definitely moving on in her life at that point because the decision was made for the divorce and that in itself was a relief off her back and she was making plans for that. So immediately I sympathize with Kathy because no one understands what it's like getting married young and not knowing who you are better than me. And not getting to that point where you want to know who you are and you start to realize like I'm only Kathy that's been married to Steve. I'm only Kathy that has been a mom since I was so and so age. You know what I mean? And I have no clue what my interests are or what I'm into. And when you have a partner who tries to hold you back from being who you are, especially when you start to learn it, I feel like that's the majority of, or that's the big reason why a lot of marriages fail when people are younger. The, does um, Kathy come from a home of like both parents there? That's a good question. I honestly don't know. I didn't find, since it was so long ago, um, you know, the death and everything, I had a hard time finding a whole lot of information on her. 
because most times in situations like that and when you are put in these situations it's usually because like um most people feel obligated to actually build up this family system because they lacked it as a kid so it's like you know and this is kind of what society expects yeah. i personally believe that um you should actually just like though it's what society expected way 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 back we're at a point now where you can date a person for like ever. And if you don't want to be with them, boom, you never even had to like get their last name or go through the steps. You know, absolutely. I agree with that more than anyone, especially I will say, especially to young ladies, because I'm sure you can vouch women are taught that they're not allowed to date. We're taught that if you date, and I'm not talking about sleeping with people, I'm talking about dating, just dating. But you're taught if you do talk to a, a multiple dudes that you're called a hoe or, or it's demeaned. And so a lot of women get with their first love and think like, I need to just be committed to this person because that's what we're taught. We're taught to just be wives and mothers. And so a lot of us women need to realize it's okay to date. It's okay to date multiple people I mean be respectful don't don't string them all along you know but just date and get to know people you know and and then you'll see red flags you'll learn behaviors you don't like and you won't have to too many people change for relationships you know and that's the thing see so she's at a point where she's saying that she doesn't know who she is anymore and it's because the person that she had to become to be in this relationship has grown she's growing past that she's saying oh wait I don't like doing this thing, this thing that you, you know, like of me, I don't like that in myself. So at this is just one of those like tidbit moments, but because I I can see like at this point, I'm like, I always feel for both parties. Like, it's like, man, I, I hate that she feels stuck, but it's like, man, your whole like relationship, you probably love this person and it's ending. But, you know, that's just I'm one of those people where like I. I like to play, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see that too. Even for Steve or any other man who's went through this, again, like I said, with women being taught how they are as little girls and then they become adults and they marry young. and, And then I assume the man probably feels like, what has changed? Why are you feeling differently? Why don't you know yourself? I know you, you're the person I want you to be. So for both parties, I can see how it can be very confusing. So I think you're right. If people just learn to date, get to know each other and always stay true to who you are, it'll probably fix that a little bit. And you're right. We're not in a place anymore. There are so many people on this earth. You no longer have to settle for Jim Bob yeah. unless you live in the smallest town on earth. And even then you can move. So it's like, we don't have to settle anymore. Be comfortable dating and getting to know people, even though the dating game is weird out there. I had to exit. It is weird out there. <laughs> See, um, and a relationship that I had found interesting because like this type of uh, dynamic, you usually see it with men. But I had actually read a story recently about Ryan Reynolds and Alanis Morissette, and she felt that same way. Like when he left she felt like he had taken something like she would never, you know, love again type deal. And it moved me because I was like, wow, you usually hear this with like men. It's like, right, you know, so just seeing that flip. That's so weird. I didn't know Ryan Reynolds and Alanis Morissette dated. Oh, oh, she does, though. (laughs) <laughs> that's like taylor swift with jake gyllenhaal right like yeah you know? it's, it's in that same kind of thing where it's like damn the one that got away you know and we've all felt that um unfortunately it'd be like that sometimes right somebody cares more it's usually how it is in relationships you get lucky if you get with a person that but anywho i don't want us to get distracted yeah. uh, <laughs> for this situation though they were at a place where they had grown apart and she Kathy was ready to move on about her life and it seems like Steve is still trying to hold on to what they had because it worked for him but it wasn't working for her anymore yeah and it's like he's making it like he's listening to her by like being like oh she says she you know she but you're also taking away from what she's telling you by holding her there like yeah, she yep. says, you know, she can't be that person anymore, but we'll work. It'll work. We can. And no. I also think like there's a lot of people out there that are very manipulative and they make a situation seem one way. And Lord, do I know it. But they will, you know, they make you feel crazy because they make a situation seem like, 
well, what's the problem? I mean, we're, we're separated, but we'll work on things and blah, blah, blah. And you've already told them, I don't want to work on things. This isn't what I want, blah, blah, blah. And you end up feeling like you're almost, I don't know. I feel like it's very, like some people can be very baiting. You know what I mean? They bait you into situations and then play victim when you're, when you stand up for yourself or you stick to what you want, you know? Yeah. So him, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. So let's see. It should be noted that Steve wasn't questioned for two days after the incident. Steve told investigators that after he moved out of the house, they did remain friendly. And the next day, Kathy had asked him to babysit their daughters while she went out with a friend. According to Steve, Kathy was getting ready when he arrived. He said she told him she was going to meet one of her girlfriends after work. She left at approximately 11.15 or 11.30 to head to Beaumont to meet her friend. By 4.15 a.m. the next morning, Kathy Page was dead. But strangely, when she was found, she wasn't wearing any makeup or jewelry. And we'll come back to that. The autopsy determined she had been strangled. She had a broken nose and a black eye. There were blood stains on her underwear and skin, but not on her outer clothes. And authorities believe she was killed in another location, then cleaned up, dressed and placed in her car. The autopsy also showed that Kathy had engaged in sexual intercourse shortly before her death. At this point, authorities also learned that she had not gone to meet Charlotte that night. Instead, she spent the night with a boyfriend in a motel in Beaumont, 10 minutes from Vider. He acknowledges they had sex. Kathy's date, known as Tom, volunteered his help in the investigation and passed the polygraph test, and he was never considered a suspect in Kathy's murder. He told investigators that she'd left his hotel room around 2.30 a.m. and had driven home. He said that she'd been wearing white jeans, a gray top, a watch, her wedding ring, and earrings, and had a full face of makeup on. However, when Kathy was found, she was barefaced with no jewelry and no makeup and was missing her socks. Kathy's sister Sherry would later state in trial that her bare face was indicative of Kathy's nightly routine of removing her makeup and jewelry and getting in the shower just before she went to bed. It was already creating a crazy atmosphere. I'm a person who's, uh, who's holding control to a relationship and you have them watch your kids while you go out uh, with, with your mans. It's a bad situation. It's a bad situation to be in. I would have got my sister to do it. I would have got anybody. But to have your, your ex-mans watch the kids while your new man, oh, Kathy, oh, she ain't. I mean, I don't put a whole lot into her ex watching the kids because those are his kids. That's his job. But even if she's going to see a man, she has that right. It's not. He doesn't get to dictate what she does just because he has to watch her kids. But it's messy. And it's right. a very it's, messy situation. Yes. And if you're dealing with a controlling person or someone that is crazy, you're setting yourself up for a crazy situation. I'm not saying that he is right to feel this way, but I am saying that this creates a very negative situation, which could be easily maneuvered about by not, you know, being crazy. <laughs> because no matter what someone does we do not have the right to kill them lord have mercy no not at all not at all me personally though i just couldn't do that like even if like i just couldn't because i've you know both seen that situation growing up in a broken home and it's like ah, ah i don't know if i personally could could do that to somebody you know like i but what I'm is too, she um, doing because they're separated they're no longer together they're getting divorced yeah, but I don't know. It's just because I'm very, like, I I think about how something would make someone feel. Like, if it was me put on the other side of this, like, if I still hadn't... Because there is a whole point to, like, moving on, you know? And it's like... Yes, and you're, you're he still has it, like, being thoughtful. But imagine yeah. if you... I can only speak on this because you know my ex. So there is a point, I know for a fact, there's a point where you try to be thoughtful and all that stuff, and then you realize that it's not worth it and you need to live your life because they it doesn't matter if you're thoughtful or considerate or not does my ex still act crazy as fuck to this day 
Mm. Yes, the fuck he does. So should I put my life on pause and on hold so that I can cater to his feelings when really he should just move on? Yeah, yeah. So how much time has passed here since like the, the split? The thing is, is that we don't really know what was going on behind the scenes, right? Like yeah. we only know that he's moved out or whatever, but we don't know how long they've been separated. She may have been asking him to move out for years on end, right? Like, but the point of the matter is, is that it's messy. You're right. She's not caring about his feelings. Um, should it get her killed? No. Uh, should it change his mind about how he sees her? Yes. Um, but again... <laughs> Yeah, not a, uh, not something making you worthy of being. I could see that in like a normal situation, this would be like a oh wow, so that's what we doing, okay? Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So that's not all. The autopsy also noted that whoever Kathy had sex with that night had had a vasectomy. Her boyfriend, however, had not had one, meaning that she had sex with another person that night. And wouldn't you know? Steve had had a vasectomy a few months earlier. When questioned, Steve admitted that he and Kathy did have sex that night, but that it occurred before she went out. Kathy's friend Sherry has always been adamant that she believes Kathy would not have done that, that she would not have had sex with him before going out with another man. Sherry also learned from Steve's sister-in-law, Small Towns Talk, that he had called two different phone numbers the night of Kathy's death. One was Charlotte, and the other was the motel. Sherry and Kathy's father, James Fulton, believed that Steve became furious after finding the phone numbers and discovering that Kathy lied about what she was doing that night, which honestly is believable, right? He found out she was with another man and snapped. Yeah. They believed that when she came home, he demanded to have sex with her. When she refused, he attacked, raped, and strangled her to death. After realizing he killed her, he possibly felt remorse, cleaned her up, and redressed her and placed her in the car, and so on and so on. But of course, that is just speculation, and Steve has always claimed his innocence. Steve even stated he has received death threats on the phone, but he believes something very different happened to Kathy. He believes a very prominent Italian family in Beaumont called the Beaumont Mafia was responsible for her death, and that the police are framing him. Honestly... Like, after saying that, that sounds so fucking stupid, Steve. (laughs) Guys, I have been to Beaumont. uh, Not a place I like or a place I would stay. Um, It's just not for me personally. Um, Actually, one of the times that I went to Beaumont, I met a a crazy dude who really talked about hating and wishing that his wife wasn't around. So that's just crazy. Um, Beaumont's just not that place. And to tell me that there is a Beaumont Mafia... I, you couldn't get me to believe it. You just really couldn't get me to believe it. This sounds like really, and I was going to say this earlier, the whole stage thing seems very loving. It's like, right. I want you to be in this like, kind of like, pretty, said, like he felt remorse. Yeah. This cleaned up nice, you know, like, oh, you look. Yeah. You know, like this is the mother of his children. I can totally see that it, this that makes much more sense than the police trying to frame you. Mm-hmm. So there are a few things that have the family feeling like the police have helped to cover up for Steve. When the crime scene photos were taken, apparently there was no film in the camera. It also took the police three years to convince the district attorney to issue a search warrant for the Page home. Three years later. Wow. They did not search the home for three years. AKA all evidence is gone. And last but not least, apparently it is known around Biter that Steve's parents are close friends with the chief of police. All of this leads her family to believe that the cops have assisted Steve in getting away with this. While Steve believes he's been targeted since day one and the police have refused to look at any other suspects. Since her death, Kathy's family has sued Steve for wrongful death. But both cases, they did it twice, so far have ended in mistrials, and to this day, her murder remains unsolved. In the wrongful death trials, Kathy's mother claimed she arrived at Kathy's home an hour after her daughter's body was found. Steve had a scratch on his nose and was pacing the living room, wiping his hands. 
Despite the early hour, he had also been doing laundry and there was fresh wash hanging up around the house. Four days later, Kathy's family claimed to have witnessed Steve and his family trying to clean the carpet in their home. His excuse for it was that they spilled grease on the carpet. And Kathy's sister, Sherry, also testified that he was abusive to Kathy. Neighbors also stated that they heard loud arguments and banging on the walls coming from the home. And Steve admitted that he did not want Kathy to be autopsied. One of the biggest things I noticed is witnesses testified that Steve is left-handed and the autopsy determined that Kathy had most likely been strangled by a left-handed person. Wow, that's, um, that's interesting. It seems like everything is just like, literally adding up to this guy i have no idea how you dude. could dude like some a lot of it is circumstantial i i 100 agree with that but it is good circumstantial evidence left-handed and she was strangled by a left-handed person <laughs> i've actually never even been around a left-handed person i i don't find like that's unnatural honestly <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, no, I have to feel like maybe there would have been <laughs> no shade to the left-handed folks out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, only, also, I feel like there could have been physical evidence had you not waited three years to search the house. Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, there are several. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. I've. I just know from video evidence. I do a lot of uh, just weird, random research, and I know that there are like chemicals to clean these things up, like. I'm just saying. So it it's easy. My thing is, is having all of these, like, it does seem like they're covering up for him. It really does. And it really does seem like his family just comes from privilege like that. You know? Well, in 1999, Steve was finally financially liable for Kathy's death in civil court. He was ordered to pay 200000 to her family. He was also later convicted of repeatedly desecrating her grave. He is still living in Texas and has yet to be charged criminally for her death. Sadly, I also found that her daughter Monica died in 2011 at the age of 28 from an overdose suicide, which her partner felt was in direct correlation with all she suffered losing her mom. In a 2018 episode of Cold Justice, they covered this case and interviewed many witnesses, one of which saying he had seen Steve walking away from the ditch where Kathy's body was found, but didn't come forward sooner because he was with his mistress at the time. Despite all of this evidence, the DA does not feel that there is enough evidence to prosecute him, although investigators do continue to work any leads they get. Steve Page to this day claims he is innocent. Now, despite during all of this, the fact that the announcement was made that a suspect was Steve Page, police never arrested Steve, and their lack of actions angered Kathy's family. James Fulton, Kathy's father, was convinced the police were covering for Steve as he'd grown up with members of the police force and his parents were friendly with Detective Mosley's mother and father. He began painting signs to attract attention from people driving through Vider in the hopes of pushing the police department into investigating his daughter's case. The signs statements have included Steve Page brutally murdered his wife in 1991. Vider PD does not want to solve this case. I believe they took a bribe. The attorney, the attorney general should investigate James Fulton signed her father, which first of all, go daddy he is not playing when i say signs i mean he is putting up big ass billboards and guys if you want to see them i'm going to put a couple of them on the instagram page so that you can look through daddy was not playing he wants answers for his baby girl no that's amazing yes and the signs include images of steve and kathy steve eventually left fighter for houston in 1995 following the billboard creation These billboards would later inspire a movie called Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. So check that movie out. Um, I'm sure you are wondering about the grave desecrating. Well, after Kathy was buried, the flowers left at her grave were found scattered across the cemetery on more than one occasion. James Fulton hired a private investigator who caught Steve Page on camera kicking the flowers and marking her grave. Like, what a piece of fucking shit. You didn't do it, but you have so much hatred that you destroy her grave, urinate on her grave, shit on her grave. Like, what a... Dude, some people, man. 
actually i've i've uh read stories of like um it, there was this one where a woman her husband died with the woman that he was sleeping with um and it was her best friend and so that wow. does put you in a very awkward position you know because like i have to mourn you but at the same time you you were sleeping with my behind my back <laughs> so there are certain situations and she did def uh defecate on his grave so i i i just feel how like people mourn i don't know and it's like if he was like if he was innocent and he was doing that it's like you find out that but she was not even with you. So honestly, it's a different situation for you, honestly, Steve. Right. You're, you're, you're just, just being a, controlling you're if dick. you're mad about that, really. But and he reminds me of like, the situation victims. just reminds me of, yes, and a controlling person that they don't care about making the relationship better until you want to leave. And then they want to play the victim. Like, oh, poor me. She, like I said, women do this all the time. We give years of trying to tell you there was a problem. And then when we're done, we're done. And I can't tell you how many times that is when the man chooses to change, but the woman's already gone. So she could have been for a year now, like, I'm done with this. I'm done with this, Steve. And barely just got a boyfriend. And now you're mad about it. When, like you said, he's already moved out, got a condo. Like, I understand if he, they were still living together and she was doing that, but you're separated. She has a right to move on with her life. And honestly, even for the woman who was doing that because the husband cheated, this person's dead. So I understand you were hurt. Go to a therapist. Why are you mark? Or why are you doing that to a dead person? It, he doesn't even know. You're not even hurting him. You're literally just being disrespectful to his family at this point. And even if he hurt you and did something wrong to you, that doesn't mean his family deserves to pay for that for the rest of your life every time you go and fuck up their grave. So I'm kind of not on that lady's side on this one. Don't completely fuck up the grave. But I mean, if you want to take you, if you want to take a shit, I mean, I'm just saying that that is really good for the soil. It's great nutrients. I'm <laughs> done with you. Shut the hell up. We are moving on. Um, I will say though that it's still poor taste on Steve's part, and this is another reason. Steve being in Houston is another reason I cannot stand Houston. I'm done with you. <laughs> oh my gosh well sadly that is it for this case steve went on to become a carpenter and remarried according to the daily mail he now has a very young girlfriend and he sent his daughters to live with his parents in alabama after the death of their mother which to me is just fucked up like wow so you made your daughters lose both parents um, these type of people usually don't care for things like that. Right. These are um, possessions to get the other person to feel something yeah. like control. They're, that's yeah, what I said. control. They're just pieces. Yep. And oh, yeah. it's a really Steve's sick type. thing. I know Steve's tight. I, Steve's tight. I only I care when it's to make you feel something. You mean to tell right. me you didn't think about our daughters when you did this? <laughs> they can't break you down. It gets to this situation. If they can't mentally break you down anymore and make you feel bad about yourself, well, they're going to get to it another way. And that's why I said on last episode, guys, this runs with our pattern from last episode. When you leave, that is the most dangerous time for you in a mental and physically abusive relationship, even in a mental one. That man or woman may have never put their hands on you before. But they may now because what, like we say, they get so angry. They build it up on themselves, right? They're just so upset. And they're thinking the same things that a normal person would think, only they take it to that next level, right? Because a normal person, would, like you said, would be like, you wrong for that and I'm not dealing with you no more. But mm -hmm. to a controlling person, you've shamed them. You've embarrassed them. You've done, so now you have to pay, you know? And I will say that with, with parents, and this is something I noticed, is that, your children for these con in these controlling situations are just pawns are just pieces and it's like the thing that gets me is in certain situations is like i get that you know you want and shan you can you can tell you can correct me but like i get that you want to have the other person the other parent in your life but notice in like movies like sleeping with the enemy they completely cut off ties with this crazy person 
which is the way I think you have to handle it. You have yeah. to like completely distance yourself because if you continue to have them in your life, well, they feel like you're, you know, trying to keep them around. You're trying to hold on to right. the relationship. Yep. Whereas you got to completely they make let that go. shit up in their head. Yep. At least you have to set boundaries. I know it's easier said than done because I was yeah. in that situation. When you have kids, obviously you can't just walk away. And the sad part is these people tend to be incredible dads and moms. Like they tend to, when they're with their kids, but like you said, it's all a show so that they can look like the best. And I'm not saying all, you know, not narcissistic all. or abuse. Right. I'm not, there's no absolutes here, but I'm just Most saying, of them. Right. And, and you really, you have to set boundaries set boundaries like chris said you can't do the same things you were doing before you can't be nice like you were being nice before or do favors like you were doing before because in their head they're making up this whole scenario that you know nothing about and then when you disappoint them when they call and find out you got a new boyfriend now they're bringing back everything that they thought was happening and now you've done them wrong right even though y'all yeah. were never together you've somehow wronged them and you have to pay for it it is so dangerous for people leaving abusive relationships, physical and mental. And I stress that so hard because so many people do not consider mental abuse the same. But you're, it you're much is. it's like you said earlier, this person should get help. Like this person should seek mental help because mm -hmm. these aren't normal thoughts. These aren't like normal thoughts. Right. Which is actually an interesting thing, Shan. I'm going to actually send you this video. It, kind of breaks down uh like i don't know if you you watch you watch the heath ledger joker and you mm -hmm. the way that it breaks down that character's like mentality and the way that he thinks i i would be curious to hear your take on it because it's actually like super crazy how it was wrote like the, the underlying tones and themes and stuff well but that's, it made him it fucked him up so that too yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah but the blog, A Billboard in Texas, is run by their daughter, Erin. She wrote about the relationship she had with her father and grandfather and about updates to the investigations that, that has stalled since its reopening in 2018. In June of 2021, Vider Police Chief Rod Carroll announced the reward for information on Kathy's murder was now raised to $50,000. It was actually the, Kathy's family that put up the reward money. And to this day, they are fighting for justice for their loved one. Mind you, that's 30 years later. This happened before I was even born. If you have any information, call 833-TIPS or go to the website 833tips.com and you can leave a message there. You can also contact the Vider Police Department at 409-769-4561. But that is all I have for today, guys. Chris, any news for you? I don't have news. I have, a, I have a closing thought. And that's notice in this case, Steve is a an alleged murderer. Or, you know, like every bit of evidence would lead you to believe. Right? And you earlier compared in contrast to the Kyle Dickenhouse um, thing. <laughs> um, so I just want to say that isn't it strange in our society how you could kill someone? And still be sitting next to people like, you know, like you, you didn't kill someone like I could be in a room with three murderers and never know. Isn't that scary? And like, that, And then I, you got people like Casey Anthony who now work for law firms helping get people off. And that just, was a sick ass case. Crazy. It's just fucking crazy. That is our but, law system, guys. And then you have people like Rodney Reed sitting in prison for decades for a crime he did not commit, that they have proof and evidence that would show that he did not commit these crimes. And yet he was convicted, even though this Steve, who has evidence that shows he did commit the crime or somehow could have, doesn't even get charged. It oh my doesn't gosh. even get charged. You know, you guys should watch The Lincoln Lawyer, which depicts that kind of same thing of mm -hmm. one dude who is in a well-off family and he completely fucks this guy who is, you know, from a poor sector, has a worse off life. And that guy was actually innocent though, mm -hmm. but he was convicted. And the lawyers always give them some sort of fucked up deal every time. 
Yep. Um, I've talked enough about the Rodney Reed case that I need to go ahead and cover it, but there is so much that I know it's going to take me weeks of research and writing, but I will have that eventually and just know we are covering that case. Um, other than that, me and Chris, I wanted to let you guys know, I know we've had a couple episodes that have came out late. Uh, we're working on it. Chris has started a new schedule. He's working nights now. So we're just kind of letting him adjust to that. And then we'll figure out what days work best for him so that he can give you guys his most like he always does every time. Yeah. I'll try not to be too, uh, uh, what is it? nagging? I have, uh, I have that issue. I'm working on it. You're not a nagger. You, everyone loves, you're invested in our cases and in the people in the cases. And I love that you get so invested in the person. I love to bring the facts and I love that you bring the person, you make it a human instead of just a case. You know what I mean? You, you're angry, just like the person listening is angry. And I love that. So I want to keep getting that. That's why we will make sure that every episode you are awake. Yeah. (laughs) 100% like Katy Perry. You know, well, make sure you guys go ahead and follow the podcast. Go ahead and subscribe so you get all the updates when we release a new episode. Drop us a rating. I did see we have gotten a couple. We had one negative one and Chris will vouch that it broke my heart. It -hmm. was about our equipment. Apparently, I know we've had a couple episodes where Things didn't sound the best, but we're working on it. I'm just a working mom. Chris is just a working dude. So we don't have a whole lot of money, but when we can, we invest and we try to get better. And I hope things have sounded better. But we also got a really awesome um, review and it was really sweet. It you know ended in a pop-off queen and I can respect that. So please go ahead and make your comments, your uh, reviews. We don't mind if you have a negative one, it's going to make us, do better it's going to make us want to do better so please let us know what you think um and of course go follow us on the instagram page that will be forgotten fridays podcast or even our tiktok forgotten fridays podcast on tiktok i do try to release content there especially the photos videos anything we have in regards to the case i want you guys to be able to see it and follow along so make sure you add us everywhere you can And me and Chris are going to work on getting some new video content for you guys here shortly on the YouTube page. But other than that, that's all I have for today. You guys have an excellent week and we will see you next week. We won't see you. We will talk to you next week on Forgotten Fridays podcast. Bye, guys. Bye.